when we first came here, I think people thought I'd either had a nervous breakdown or I robbed a bank or I was in the witness protection program. John Fisher's my name. And uh, I and my wife and our family, uh, we own Fisher's Loft Inn in Port Rexton, uh, coastal Newfoundland. It's a 33 room inn. Uh, it has a restaurant, it has a bar, it has a living room, a library, and it has an executive conference center. Port Rexton is just full of a natural environment. It's a very North Atlantic coastal feel to everything that we do. We have lots of real people walking around here who visitors connect with. Um, and we're all about what goes on here naturally. So we have incredible hiking trails, beautiful beaches. It's just, it's just real Newfoundland. There's nothing that's domesticated about this landscape. It's pretty wild and it's rugged and it's the North Atlantic. You know, you can't let ideas sit still for very long. We were like, wait a minute, did you live in Newfoundland? What about starting a microbrewery in Newfoundland? There's like hardly any here. We were drawn to look in this area, the Trinity Bight area, um, because we had gotten married in English Harbor a year yeah. prior. We quickly started looking at what opportunities were here and this building was sitting on the market. We said, Everything just rolled quickly. We said, okay, let's come take a look at this building. Came in and right away we could envision a brewery in here and a tap room and a place for us to live in the back. It just all quickly made sense. And so we just ran with it. Instead of having these barriers and resistance that we were having in Nova Scotia, everything just started to flow smoothly here. So it was like, okay, this is where we're supposed to be. This is what we're supposed to be doing here. Yeah. And yeah. Way it went. In 1993, Dave and I came down here with intentions of building a house in Port Rexton, and somebody told us about this house for sale over in English Harbor. 2004 Four. was when we approached the diocese and asked them if they would let us take over this church rather than see it come down. Well, we are Kim and Dave Padden, and we're two of a half a dozen or so volunteers who run the English Harbor Arts Center, which you're standing in. If I think back to when I came back here as a child, it was that sense of absolute freedom. Like you could just run, you know, you, 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 nobody was saying, watch out for the cars, do this, do that. There were, there were no instructions, the door was open and you could just go. I think that kids still experience that here. When you're in an urban area and everything is kind of, you don't even notice how busy it is until you step away from it and you don't notice how beautiful these simple old buildings like this. I think part of the beauty of this building is its simplicity. And in some ways we probably all crave that simplicity and people find it here. They find it both in the beauty of the land and the beauty of the natural vernacular architecture of the area. And I, I think that's probably what drew people and made them feel good here. We came here because we liked fresh air and we had some idea of living more quietly. We didn't like the overdeveloped world of Ontario, Canada. 
Um, and what happened since then has been a slow return to life of an outport. So now we have young people who have been working in the oil fields in Western Canada starting to come back because making $150,000 a year, uh, living in an apartment building far away from all the friends and relatives and people you've grown up with just simply doesn't hold the appeal anymore. I know people who've left the $150,000 world and, and traded it in for a $30,000 world. That tells you something about quality of life here. You know, as, as more and more younger people from say St. John's or Toronto or whatnot are moving to places like this and they develop enterprises and so forth. The, the youngsters from here, they're, they're thinking the same things I think and they're saying, well maybe I don't have to leave here if I don't want to. Especially me not being from Newfoundland, being a come from away. You know, we don't want to like just come in and start a business and interrupt people's flow and, and how the town operates. So we just kind of wanted to, to continue what this what this place was which was a community center have a community feel have those long tables so you can like have different couples sitting down chatting telling stories whatever uh, and just kind of keep keep that vibe when you want to do something like this you're you are tampering with people's identities and their roots i mean maybe they were christened here maybe they got married here yeah. maybe you know their parents were their funerals were here and I, you come along and you suddenly say, I'm going to change all that, and I'm going to turn that into a place where bands play. And uh, it has to be done the right way. I don't think, in fairness, that we really saw the future of this town. And maybe five years ago, it suddenly started to appear before us. And now, in 2017, um, Everybody's talking about Port Rexton. Um, it, it's a remarkable thing that's happened. We don't quite know how it happened, but it did. You just never know how things are going to develop. I don't think anybody foresaw any of this. You know, political leaders 20 years ago were saying, well, these places will all be shut down in a few more years. And now, for every six, there's a brew pub over here, you know? And these are excited about the brew pub. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just wonderful. <laughs> when I was on the town council, uh, 15 years ago, they said that 15 years from now, so 30 years from then, the last light will go out in Port Rexton. And the whole thing has turned around. We have lots of young babies, the kindergarten is expanding, um, the average age of the community is going down and down as young people move in. So suddenly there's a, 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 a wonderful future here, and it's a future free of those excessive costs of living in urban centers, free of the uh, traffic jams and pollution. Um, it's, it's the place to live. I've lived here now, my wife and I and our family, we've lived here now uh, for 28, almost 30 years, and best decision I ever made in my life. You can never predict, but perhaps it's an indication and a, and a, a good guide for the rest of the rural part of the province and other provinces, uh, what the possibilities are, you know. If you, if you get a, a group of individuals who are determined to make something, you know, to, to change things maybe, and make sure these little communities stay vibrant.